Based on the comments on my previous video, it's clear that some people don't think that ChatGPT backtesting is a good idea. They may have a point though, I'm pretty skeptical myself. But instead of making assumptions that aren't based on evidence, in this video I'm going to actually do the work and figure out if ChatGPT's backtesting results are useful or if they're rubbish. I'm also going to find out if ChatGPT is good at creating trading robots or not. If ChatGPT is good at one or both of these things, that can really speed up the process of backtesting and automating trading strategies. Feel free to follow along at home so you can learn how to do this for yourself. How's it? My name is Hugh. And in a previous video, I used ChatGPT to backtest a trading strategy that it said was profitable over 21 plus years of historical market data. From there, I used ChatGPT to create a fully automated MetaTrader EEA out of that trading strategy. Now I'm going to double check that ChatGPT backtest by comparing it to two other proven backtesting methods. Before I get started, please keep in mind that my goal here is not to create the most profitable trading strategy ever. It is simply to test out if ChatGPT is good at backtesting trading strategies and creating automated EAs. All right, let's get into it. Since I already have a MetaTrader EA and it's already installed, I simply have to run the backtest in Strategy Tester. This is a fantastic first test because it uses the same historical data that ChatGPT used in its backtest. All right, so my EA is already installed in MetaTrader 4, so I'm just going to run this test. Uh, to do this, I'm going to open the Strategy Tester that's available under Tools. That's that button right there. Once you click that, um, the screen will pop up. Then at the top, I'm going to select the EA that I created with ChatGPT, then I'm going to use Euro US dollar, daily chart, and then I'm going to check the date here. And I'm going to start this test in 2003 because as I mentioned in the previous video, that's the best time to start with the Euro US dollar. And in order to check to see if the EA is actually working, I'm going to start by testing in visual mode. And that's going to show me the trades in the chart and that will allow me to see if it's executing correctly. So I'm going to click the start button there and you'll see the green bar go across twice. The first time is to load the data. The second time it's actually going to start doing the test. Once the data is loaded, this is what you will see. And I have to let you know about a couple of weird things with MetaTrader that uh, might confuse you. So number one, if your strategy tester window is too small, let's say it's down there, it'll cut off all of the features below that. I don't know who thought of that one, but that's how it is. So if you don't see all of the check boxes and everything, then that's what the problem is. All you have to do is expand this area and you will see the rest of the features. Second thing is when you're doing a visual backtest like this, uh, this is supposed to be the speed slider. So this is the pause and restart button. And when you move the slider forward, it's supposed to go faster. But for some reason, it stays the same speed, basically from 1 to 31. If you really want to get anything done with this screen, you have to tick it over one more to 32 and that will move it forward quickly. Now this screen is a little messy, so I'm going to clean it up really quick. I'm going to take out the grid. I am also going to add the moving averages in so I can see where it's taking trades. Then I'm going to change it to candlesticks. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'll let it uh, do its thing for a little while. I want to see some trades above the 36, some trades below the 36, and then I'll evaluate them. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now I'm going to zoom in a little or a lot and uh, take a look at these trades. So there is an open buy here when price closes below, closes above, it closes it out, um, closes below, takes a trade, closes above, closes it out. Okay, so it looks like the buys are working. Now for the sells, uh, closes above, so it opens the trade, closes below, so it closes the trade. Closes above, opens the trade, closes below, closes the trade. That looks like it's working and that was just on the first try with ChatGPT. So it looks like ChatGPT could be a very reliable way to create these trading robots or some sort of automation in your trading. To do the fully automated back test, I'm going to stop this test. Then I'm going to uncheck visual mode and then I'm going to start the test and let's see how this goes. Whoa, that's a good start. All right, so the back test is completed. I'm going to hop over to the graph. And that looks quite a bit different from what I got from ChatGPT. So before I analyze this too deeply, I'm going to run the third back test, get all of the data, and then I'm going to put it together to find out what's really going on here. Real quick, remember that the Forex markets are not centralized. So the data comes from different brokers and they can be a little bit different. Unlike stock markets and futures markets where there's just one exchange and you just have one historical data file, multiple Forex brokers can have different data files. And although the prices will be about the same, they won't be exactly the same. And that's why it's important to backtest on multiple data files and on multiple platforms. 
So for this third test, some people suggested that I should do a manual back test because that's one of the most reliable ways to back test. That's a great way to back test and they are correct. However, there is a faster and better way to do this. So that's what I'm going to use. In this third test, I'm going to use Naked Markets because it makes it really easy to create an automated trading strategy without coding. And later on, it will allow me to backtest many markets and many time frames at the same time, making it the ideal way to double check the results of ChatGPT. The first thing I want to do is set up some rules. The rules are what create the automated trading strategies, and I don't need to know how to code in order to use these rules. So I'm going to go to rules, rule manager, and I'll just show you what I set up to make things faster. First thing I had to set up was a core rule, and a core rule is basically telling naked markets what to look for to open a trade. So in this case, um, I'll zoom in here. I set the first criteria as the two simple moving average has to be greater than the 36 simple moving average and the close of the last bar has to be less than the two simple moving average. I also had to add in one more criteria and that was because it was taking too many trades. So I put in and open trades count equals zero. So it looks to see if there are any open trades right now. If there aren't, then it takes a trade. If you're liking what you see here with Naked Markets, there's a link in the description below. That's my link and it will give you a discount if you decide to buy Naked Markets. They also recently launched a web version, which is awesome because now it can work on any computer with a browser. Once I set up the rule for the long side, now I have to set up the rule for the short side and Naked Markets makes that easy. So I just right click the rule, clone rule, and then I double click on that rule and I change the uh, parameters to match the short side. So real quick on this one, it's going to be the same thing. The two simple moving average is going to be less than the 36 and the close of the last bar is going to be greater than the uh, two and the open trades count is going to be equal to zero. So in order to fill up these boxes, all you do is just uh, look for, for example, the indicator there. Um, I'm going to look for indicators here and then uh, moving average is right there. So I'm going to click and drag this down into the box and then I'm going to set up the settings on that. So if I want to add another box at the end, I just click this plus and that will add that there. If I want to take it away, I just click minus and it goes away. And once you have your rules set up the way you like it, make sure to click the save rule button so that it's saved. The next rule I created was the exit rule and this is going to tell Naked Markets when to exit a trade. So the exit condition is very simple here for a long trade. The last bar has to be greater than or has to close greater than the two simple moving average. And if that criteria is met, then the action is to close the order. On the short side, it's just the opposite. You want the close to be less than the two simple moving average, and then you close the order. Once the exit rule is created, then you create the entry rule. I know that seems a little bit backwards, but it's important because you have to add the exit rule into the entry rule. And that's why you have to create the exit rule first. So the entry rule is basically the parameters of the trade, more of the mechanics of it and not so much the logic. So the first things here are the stop loss and take profit. Uh, there is no stop loss or take profit for this trade. So we're going to leave that blank. Then the type of order, you can double click on that and you can have a pending order or an instant order. In this case, it's going to be an instant order. Uh, the lot size is going to be static just for simplicity. And then I'm going to click and drag the exit rule from here. I'm going to drag it into this box and make sure that it matches with the long. And then I'll create this short entry rule. That's just going to be a sell 0.1 lots again. And then I'm going to drag the exit rule for the short into this box. Then I'm going to create a setup rule and that's going to tie everything together. And this is what I'm actually going to put on the chart. And this is what will execute the trades for me. Since we've already done all that work, this is going to be very simple. I'm just going to take that core rule that I made in the first step. I'm going to drag that into the setup condition. Uh, when that setup condition is met, then the action is going to be to take the entry rule. So for the setup rule long, it's going to be the core long and it's going to be the entry rule long. And then for the short, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be the core rule short and the entry rule short. Once that's all set up, I want to double check the automation again, just like I did with MetaTrader. So I'm going to put a template on the chart that has the moving averages. And then I'm going to take the setup rule or setup rules and I'm going to drag that onto the chart. And as you can see, those are the active rules. So those are the setup rules that are going to be looking for trades. So I'm going to hit play on this. And this is the daily chart, just like in the back test. And I'm going to let it run for a little bit so that I can see some buy and sell trades. Okay, that should be good. Let's zoom in here. Uh, take a look at the sell. So close above, enter, close below, close. Uh, close above, enter, close below, close. Okay, so it looks like the sells are working. Let's take a look at the buys. Um, Close below, enter, close above, close. 
Okay, so it looks like the buys are working correctly. So there are two ways that I could do this. Number one, I could simply just hit play and let this play itself out until the end of the data file. But that will take a little longer, but it's really good if you wanna actually see the trades play out. Another faster way to do it in Naked Markets is to use the fast backtest. So with this, you're simply going to pick the markets that you wanna backtest. And once you have the automation, you can backtest any of these markets that you want, not only the Forex markets, but other markets like stock markets and indexes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna to go to next, I'm gonna select daily because that's what we tested with ChatGPT. So I'm just gonna test that for now. I'm gonna to go to next and then I'm gonna select my two setup rules that I just created. I'm going to go to next and then I'm going to hit launch and that'll back test it. Okay, so now I have some trades from a back test. So I'm going to go into the stat center and take a look at it. So I'm going to go to source, import from back test, select my back test. And this is going to bring up all of the stats that I need to know about. Here's the results of the back test. This looks quite a bit different than the graphs from the other two back tests, but let's take a closer look and see what's happening here. Now that I have complete tests from all three platforms, I threw the trades into Excel to analyze them a little closer. One of the important things to look at is the number of trades that each platform took. So for MetaTrader, that was 1635, ChatGPT took 1619, and Naked Markets took 1691. So they're all in a similar ballpark, which tells me that they're executing trades in a very similar way. Now, there were a couple of things that I had to work out with ChatGPT, so I'll go over them really quickly here. When I was compiling the trades for this spreadsheet, I realized that I didn't have a list of trades from ChatGPT. So I went back to ChatGPT, asked for the list, and it gave me the trades. But when I graphed it out, as you can see, this was the original graph that you saw in my previous video. But after I asked for the trades and I graphed them out, and then I asked for another balance curve from ChatGPT, this is what it gave me. So I didn't understand what was going on here. So I started a new chat, I redid the test, and I got the second graph. So what must have happened here is that it got confused with all of the other tests that I did before this, and it was maybe inserting elements of the previous tests, and that's why I got a graph that was different. However, when I started a new chat, then I got a graph like this, and this is much more reliable. Second thing I noticed with the chat GPT test was that it was multiplying everything by 10. So Although I told it to use pips and I assumed that it knew what a pip was, it was actually using points. So in the Forex market, that's one decimal place over and that's actually a pip pet. So the bottom line is that all of the trades are going to come out multiplied by 10. In this case, there was a 29 pip profit and it came out to $290 in profit when it should have come out to $29 in profit. So I had to readjust that balance and this is the revised balance I got there. And then this is the new graph for that. And it's very similar to the other one. It's just the scale is different. So these are the final results of all of the back tests. And like I mentioned, after each test, they appear to be different. But when we look at them closer, they're actually more alike than you might think. So the general shape of the graph is very similar, right? Especially with MT4 and ChatGPT. And that's because it was using the same data. So we kind of expect that. So you can see that the peaks on all three graphs are in very similar places. It's just the magnitude of each peak and valley that's different. You can see a peak there, peak there, peak there, right? That matches up with that peak there. And then this obvious one here is right in the middle and that's the same there. With ChatGPT and MT4, you see a bigger difference after that large peak where this one goes down and this one goes sideways. So what I figured out with this is that I didn't give ChatGPT any instructions on including a spread or commissions or slippage. And that's why this graph is a little bit better. So once you factor in the transaction costs, it makes total sense that MT4 would have worse performance because it is factoring in the transaction costs, whereas ChatGPT is not. So that solves that problem. Now let's take a look at naked markets. Why is naked markets uh, so much flatter? Why is the graph so much flatter? And what I figured out on this one is that it's a different data set. Like I said, brokers have different data feeds. So the prices are going to be different depending on which broker you use. And because Naked Markets is using a different broker, that's why the graph came out different. However, if you look at it in the end, they all came out around the same balance, right? This is a little less than 14,000. This one is a little more than 14,000. And this one, uh, because there were no transaction costs, it came out a little more than 16,000. So what did I learn from this experiment? Here are the takeaways. The most valuable thing I learned here and the most exciting thing is that ChatGPT is really good at creating automated EAs for MetaTrader. Even though this was a really simple trading strategy, ChatGPT got the EA correct on the first try. 
And I've been using ChatGPT to create custom indicators and EAs, and it's been doing a really good job. So I'm really excited about that part. Now, when it comes to backtesting, I have proven here that ChatGPT can backtest, but it is still a little rough around the edges, so it has to be double and triple checked. When you're using ChatGPT to backtest for yourself, always remember to include the transaction costs, use a specific data file to backtest on, verify that the decimal place is in the right place, and double check the backtest by opening a new chat. It's probably possible to set all these things up in a profile in ChatGPT or another AI, but I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. More in future videos. Some people might think, what's the use of using ChatGPT to backtest if you have to verify the results with other methods? I have two answers to that question. Number one, regardless of which backtesting platform you use, you're always going to have to double check it anyway. However, ChatGPT is really good for creating a quick and dirty backtest, which makes the process faster. Number two, as I mentioned before, it's still early days for this technology. So if we can master it now, when it gets better, we will be that much better than everybody else. If you missed the first two parts of this video series and you want to see what I did before this video, be sure to check them out because they're coming up next.